sliding into the last session of the day of the Orissa Literary Festival 2022 themed My Country, My Kahani. How many of you have watched movies like Panga, Nil Bhatte Sannata, and Bareli Ki Barfi? I am certain most of you would have. If you loved these movies, we are certain you would love the hands that pen down these scripts. Today we have with us writer and director Ms. Ashwini Tiwari Ayer, who will let us have a peep into her hugely creative mind as she talks about her journey as a writer, reflecting on her process, the setbacks she faced, and the glow of accomplishment she feels as a creator in the session. Is there a formula for success, how to write a great script? I would request Ms. Aswini Tiwari Ayer and the festival coordinator, Kaveri Bamzai, to come up to the stage for the session. Ma'am, please. So, Ashwini, you'll really have to do something very drastic to match up to that. Best of luck. <laughs> no pressure, but... <laughs> so, um, it's uh, my special delight to welcome Ashwini Ayer Tiwari. I love her movies, I love her book, and I think all of you will share that with me. Uh, she creates these really plucky, strong heroines who, and the guys are all wimps <laughs> and wusses. I like that because... <laughs> that I won't get my male actors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then they're wimps in a nice way. So um, uh, really, Ashwini, I mean, you, you've written ads, you've directed ads, you've done short films, long films, a web series, which I loved. I don't know how many of you saw uh, Breakpoint, which was a fantastic uh, documentary on uh, Mahesh Bhupati and Leander Pay's their marvelous relationship. Uh, and uh, she's in the middle of writing her second book, and she's directed another web series. She's producing two more movies. She's uh, uh, par partnering with her husband in the movie he's doing. So I don't know where you find the time. Her husband, by the way, is Nitesh Tiwari. Uh, who also made Dangal and uh, Chichore, so quite a power couple. So really, Ashwini, what is it that you're, you know, you're obviously doing something right because uh, people love what you do. What is it that you think you're doing right? Uh, I think uh, the one thing which I may be doing right because you're saying so and I really respect your point of views because um, you're the first one who had read Mapping Love and called me and told me uh, points which uh, I myself did not see when I was writing the book. And the one thing which I feel as a creator, as a storyteller, it would be about being passionate, hmm. being very, very passionate about what you do every day. So it's like a sports person who day in and day out goes and practices the sport is because he or she wants to excel in it. So for me, it is the discipline and the passion which, uh, uh, which takes me and drives me every day. Yeah. Right. But uh, Ashwini, there is also the demands of the market. There's one thing, of course, having the passion for it. But uh, the other question is to get it right commercially, critically, uh, because uh, uh, cinema is something that has to be shared with everyone. And you have to be in sync with so many people's emotions, you know. It's uh, quite an amazing task. And I always think that a movie takes you at least two years to prep and actually shoot. The society at that time is going through something. Two years later, it will go through something else. How do you keep yourself relevant, engaged, connected? I do feel storytellers, whether you are any kind of story you say, always needs to be in par of what uh, you are seeing in society. Yes. And also with the changing culture of society and also with the changing dynamics of human relationships and how, uh, like how we used to think when we were uh, 20 and now if you go to colleges and see how um, the youngsters of our country think, yeah. it's very different. Exactly. It also changes with the kind of clothes I used to wear in college and what, what uh, kids wear now. So, uh, we By the way, we're very happy that you're wearing something from Odisha. Yes, I At I, least I, a round of applause for that. Yeah. <laughs> she made a conscious effort. I made obviously. a conscious effort. Yeah, I made a conscious effort. Yeah. So uh, I do feel that it is very important as a storyteller to keep yourself completely glued in into what is happening. Right. Uh, what is a changing behavior pattern. Uh, like brands change. I come from an advertising yeah. background. And 
the same uh, so i uh, i launched whisper in india and at that point of time when uh, this was about 10 years back when we used to see what kind of uh, uh, insight we need to use yeah to show that ad and now if i see what whisper is doing it's very different yeah so you ch keep changing your brand you keep changing your uh, advertising according to the consumer insights and i also believe that yes we are in the business of telling stories but we also need an audience to be coming in and telling those stories so maybe uh, the kind of stories which an audience is looking at and what they are expecting uh, has to be slightly more futuristic in terms of what you're thinking is because i may decide to tell the story today but it has to be relevant even 2 years later yeah and how do i get uh, but emotions are always the same no matter where you go in the whole world emotions like crying laughing uh jokes or the human emotions the parental relationships or a husband wife relationships changes according to the setup and uh the uh i do feel that you there's a lot of uh, existential peer pressure which comes in so uh things which were not okay before are completely fine now yeah so uh, keeping that in mind the kind of stories you write um like a woman can have a say when when she wants to have a divorce yeah and that would have never happened maybe even 7 years back we would have not had stories like that right so in bareilly ki barfi she is coming from a small town not a small town anymore yeah <laughs> so when i was shooting in lucknow uh, and bareilly in 2016 it was the first time uh, very few filmmakers had actually gone there and now 6 years 7 years later everyone is shooting there That's so right. things change yeah. uh, malls have come up so according to that when things change around you i'm not going to be using the same because for me storytelling is someone out there sitting in the theater needs to look at it and say hey you know what i understand this that's world. my story that's my story yeah. maybe it's not or it has to be a magical world yeah. where you take me into a story and you feel that okay i do not know anything about this world but it is curiosity yeah. which gets me into into knowing what is happening you were once also telling me you know the uh, uh, dealing with the attention span you know yeah. the whole idea that okay next 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 you know you have that uh, you have that fidgetiness that has crept into the audience and a uh, part of it may also be because they've been watching so much content at home and you can pause and you know go do your thing come back and so that fidgetiness how do you address that you have to keep surprising you have to keep what do you do there was a very famous dialogue entertainment entertainment ha, entertainment and the balla who can forget yes her. so it was important that word still exists yeah. today it is important because we are still in the business of entertainment whether we tell a thriller or whether we tell a emotional story or whether we tell a drama or whether we have something completely comedy it is still entertaining an audience in in a certain way it is sticking some emotion that you go out of the theater whether you laugh and you have a gag because it get see audiences also are very intelligent today we cannot uh we cannot underestimate yeah the audience the audience is an audience who is watching world cinema they are watching everything possible uh whether it's documentaries or whether it is social causes or whether it is entertaining films they are aware uh where in the day they would know who was a director of a film for the longest time no one knew, no one knew. who used to make a film yeah uh now people know people yeah. know who makes music and thanks to our audience that i am sitting and talking to you today so uh, i think that is very important to not underestimate any individual who's coming into a theater who's watching your movie that he or she would not get it they get it and it is important to keep that in mind and make sure that you're writing for your audience you're writing stories that would that would tick some emotional hmm. quotient hmm. there so i mean is there when you're writing something do you keep in mind certain principles that okay i will do this and i will not do this you consciously stay away from something yes there are some things which i completely stay away from uh, which uh, i don't think so i can ever do a horror film so that is something which i will ever stay away from because i can't watch horror films uh, the one thing Ditto. which yeah the one thing which i also i 
It's conscious is because I think it's my upbringing and it's also the way I look at things is that I would not, even if I have a woman being demeaned, but there will be a reciprocation later. So I cannot have a, a woman who is demeaned in her stories. Right. And she uh, will be. She will, she will she survive, will she will it. rise. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I also feel that for me, storytelling somewhere has to inspire, aspire a younger generation. Yeah. Uh, and it is important for me to tell all kinds of stories. So if I want to tell a story about a, about a villager who made it big, I would do that. Because for me, someone out there will get inspired. Nilbate Sanata did that. Exactly. For me, Nilbate Sanata was a great example of like, you know, no matter who you are or where you come from, you have the right to dream. A, a woman who comes from an economic back, a backward background or would want to, uh, want to excel in, in her dreams doesn't think low for her daughter. She wants her daughter also to excel. Even in Panga, I mean, yeah, and she wants to do something that yes. uh, people... That's because yeah. uh, statistics say that the Lenin uh, statistics yeah. or any statistics which say that even today about 43%, and please uh, ignore me for my percentages, yeah. that women leave their jobs after they have a child. Right. And we all know that. Everyone sitting We've here knows. We have us. seen it around us. We are the ones who will actually say, you know, you need support of husbands. You need support of family. Yeah. Some may say that, you know, you're privileged that you will be having a lot of people to help you take care of your kid. But we do not have anyone. And that's also fair. But the idea was not that you need to go back to work after you have a child. The idea was to keep yourself busy after you have a child. Do not lose your identity. To keep yourself alive. To keep yourself alive. So you won't have that. What else? You won't have women being demeaned. What else do you, or, or what else do you consciously try to do? I think for me, upliftment stories always uh, uh, make me feel happy. Mm -hmm. uh, it is my pursuit of happiness. So uh, yeah, and uh, uh, I cannot say that I won't, I, because if I if I make decide to do a make a thriller tomorrow then there would be something which, uh, which would be something which, which I would want to show is because it has a story there. Yeah. It has a story arc there. But uh, I don't think so I can do anything frivolous. There has to be a why, what, and how question in my mind before I even get it out right. there. Yeah. Okay, so we've also heard so much about, uh, you know, Bollywood versus South, etc. You're someone who is comfortable in both languages, Tamil, Hindi, English, everything. <laughs> Uh, and you made Nilbate Sanata in uh, Tamil as well, which is wonderful. Uh, do you feel that there is some element that they are getting right? When I say they, I mean, I mean Telugu, Tamil, Malayalam, to a certain extent. When you see a movie like Antara, for instance, it is about something that we don't know. I mean, it's uh, this Bhut uh, Kola, which I frankly uh, didn't know existed. But it is so beautifully portrayed, and it's almost... Uh, uh, transcend transcendental and it's not religion it's it's actually uh, you know a, sp a spiritual uh, uh, act it has nothing to do with religion but it's transcendental you know it takes you somewhere else w uh, do you feel that there is something there that they're closer to their roots or uh, their storytelling is somewhat more authentic I do feel that when you tell your story in the language you're most comfortable yeah. in you tell it with utmost honesty um, we have had movies like Mother India, Mirch Masala, and many, many more yeah. we can, we can l really look and say, you know, these are stories which really touched us. And what happens is that we are also a social animals. So yeah. what happens is that for behavior, uh, uh, when something does well, then we want to continue doing that because we do not want to take chances. But uh, I do feel that they, why, why are translated, uh, translated books, uh, why are we reading so many translation right. books is because there are so many authors in Malayalam, in Tamil, in Odia. There's a beautiful book which came out from here right now, which has been uh, published by Aleph. Um, there are lots of books which authors have written, but ha no one knows about yeah. it is because they have not spoken about it too much. They have not spoken about themselves too much. So now, 
is a time when we are aware of things is because it's been spoken about. And the joy of and discovery. The joy, you know? And the joy of discovery. Uh, when we, uh, we are curious people, yeah. and uh, especially after the pandemic, yeah. especially at the pandemic, when you go slightly more inward, you try to go into your roots, and you want to make stories, and you want to tell stories, which, which, which connects with your roots. And when you connect with your roots, you kind of see there are a lot more stories to say, which will, uh, which will entertain an audience because Kandara entertains the yeah. audience also when through their story the end, and, and the colors and like, yeah. you know Fantastic. what happened. Yeah, and 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 the amaze way it looks. Yeah, uh, I'm curious. I want to know more about right. it. And we have had folk stories right from the beginning. Yeah. It has always been fables and folk stories in various languages. And we are so rich with our stories. Have been there for n number of years. And um, when, when, you know, some, we keep telling stories and it, it, you don't have any more stories to say. And then you start finding and you start digging. You just kind of see, you know, this is a story here and we is need to talk about it. To you? Yes, it happens, yeah. it happens all the time. It happens all the time. You go uh, back all the time. We go back to to our yeah. two best stories and, we have, yeah. the Ramayana and, and the Mahabharata. Yeah, and I whatever oh, else. Yeah, I also feel that uh, the moment we start uh, uh, stop questioning ourselves that oh, will this work? Will ah. this work in the box office? Or this is going to happen? Right. I think if we remove all that and we just go back to the sheer art of storytelling, there is so much our country has to offer right so much in everywhere there's so much our country has to offer let's talk a little about your i won't be surprised now that when there are many more filmmakers who've just taken folk stories rights yeah. and we'll like have many more then we'll callers. have many more folk stories and then we'll move on to something then else. we'll move on to something else but it's okay we are evolving and we are, uh, discovering, we are discovering new worlds and it's very important to keep telling those kind of stories sorry i'm a little distracted by your tattoo what is it Oh, it's uh, in. Uh, it's Bengali. in Bangla. It's ah. in Bengali. What does it say? Uh, it's. Uh, Just hold it up. <laughs> it's Aradhya and Nitesh. Oh, and our <laughs> son, my daughter and son. Oh, it's their names. It's their names. Why in Bengali? Uh, because I think. Um, in my growing up years, uh, everyone thought I was from Bengal. Acha. Yeah. Uh, so I, you just feel uh, no, and I'm very attracted uh, to uh, to Shantini Ketan, and okay. I love the saris of Bengal and Orissa, and I think, and I have a round face. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think we should vote for her. To and, come I eat, and, here. and I eat rice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a rice eater. <laughs> Eating reminds me of Tarla Dalal or yes. you're making uh, food. Yeah, um, uh, food. You're a big foodie. Uh, what is it like discovering her life? Uh, and and I also want to talk to you quickly about Mr. and Mrs. Narayan Murthy, which I know you're working on, which I am really waiting for. I think that is a wonderful relationship that needs to yeah. be portrayed uh, on screen. So let's talk quickly about Tarla, Mr. So, and Mrs. Uh, Murthy. So Tarla Dalal's idea actually came from our writer Piyush, who's also written a whole lot of films with us. And uh, he wanted to explore the idea of India's first home chef yeah. and we kind of realized that during the pandemic everyone and I'm, I'm sure many of you here would have gone on to YouTube videos and seen how to cook and and we kind of realized there are so many home chefs yeah. and women who are home chefs right. uh, and it is very fascinating to see a lot of men also looking at how to make food yeah. and they are making uh, they are enjoying themselves they're making uh, a living out of it and it was so much of joy to see that you don't have to step out of the house, but you just have to be presentable and speak in the language yeah. you are most comfortable. So I wanted to have uh, Gujarati kadi. So I go and see. I, 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 more than this, was this exciting thing was uh, a, a woman from Rajasthan wearing a Marwari sari and like, you know, the attire, the traditional attire is, is teaching you how to make gatto nushak. So which is like really cool. So. Yeah, so it was about her story because she was the one who actually introduced the idea of having um, cooking cookery shows yeah. and also teaching uh, cooking to not to not make uh, to give a lot of girls hope. Yeah. 
So I think it's a very interesting story, even in today's day and age. More than, I think, more than the cooking thing, it's more of an entrepreneurial journey that you can be at home and you can still be an entrepreneur. Right. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Murthy? Uh, Mrs. Uh, Murthy, I, I hope I have like one percent of her oh, yeah, vibes in me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, she is a gem of a person, and also Mr. Murthy. Uh, that will take time. We are still writing, uh, and uh, yes, I always tell this: the day I make that, I I make that story. I think that would be my last film <laughs> no, no, <nothing laughs> because after be that, I would not know what to do. <laughs> Uh, you also have a web series called Fadu. What what does Fadu mean? Yeah, so F Fadu, uh, sorry, but it, it is basically kick ass. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and that's something... I think Fadu sounds better. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so Fadu in Hindi, and it's a very Mumbai Hindi, and uh, that's something completely different uh, because uh, I'm working with two extremely talented individuals. Pavel Gulati and Saimi Kher, and written by a poet and a poet, writer, director, a literature professor, Soumya Joshi from Ahmedabad. Oh. The beauty about, uh, I think I'm very lucky uh, that I can tell stories partnering with various kinds of people from different parts of the country. And that truly makes me very lucky is because he stays in Ahmedabad uh, uh, he speaks Gujarati, has uh, also Mar is Maharashtrian, and you get those insights. Right. And then uh, the story is of Mumbai, but then I have Konkan also. So the insights which I get from Konkan yeah. and what I've put into the story and what I get from Mumbai, and also it's, it's an aspirational story. Is it important as two outsiders, both you and your husband, to champion other outsiders? People who don't have a home necessarily in Bollywood. So right now, what we have been trying to do uh, with our production house, Sky Pictures, is that we are mentoring and making sure that we um, get a whole lot of writers and directors from various part of the country. So uh, even though they would not know how to... See, most of the writers, this is something which I really learned in, in my advertising days that uh, not all creative directors can become executive creative directors and uh, national creative directors is because once you move from the writing space, then you're into handling clients and business and you also become an HR head is because you'll have problems with your team and, you know, and writers or creative people, some ha do not have the other, the leadership bent on them. So you just leave them there. And right now what we're trying to do is that we're getting writers, directors, from every part of the country who can tell a good story. And that's why we even partnered uh, wow. with Sangeeta Ramachandran, and I'm, I'm telling Malayalam stories now. We are producing Malayalam films also. It's because wow. I do feel that there are so many stories there, but you would never know that writer is because maybe they do not have the confidence to be talking and coming to you and telling their story. So how do you get them? Just keep. Looking. Keep looking and uh, uh, we have people, uh, because again from advertising yeah. we, have, we have clients and we have writers who have come. In fact, advertising taught us a lot of things is because I had writers from Bihar and uh, UP and uh, Chennai and Bangalore and Kerala from everywhere. So when, so an idea could come from anywhere, but if I have to write it in Hindi, then the person who's really good at the, in the language would help the other person. Yeah. And together, they create a great idea. So it, is, it was never about you and me. It was always about us. Right. And that's the kind of system we're trying to create right now is because most of my, my writers are now becoming directors. Right. And we are getting directors from outside also because you have an idea. Maybe you do not know how to go and sell it because ideas is also about selling it. Mm. And we are trying to do that. Yeah. Right. So last question, we have, you know, we've had uh, the romantic phase, angry young man phase, we've had the small town, etc. What phase do you think we're in now? Is it this fan fantasy, uh, superhero, folklore, that kind of space that we're in now? I think the space uh, we are in right now dictates of what are the kind of films which are working. And uh, the phase we are in right now is that uh, uh, we need to take our audiences seriously. seriously. 
yeah, we need to take them really seriously is because uh, uh, it is important that uh, we don't uh, play with their sentiments. And we are living in a world which is constantly bombarded by different stories all the time and different forms of entertainment all the time. So if I have to go out and spend two hours of my time in traffic in, uh, on a Saturday or a Sunday or on a Friday evening or on a weekday also, uh, it better be as good that I spend that two hours is because I can go to a restaurant instead of that, I can go to a mall, I can go to a coffee shop, and I can also go to a gaming zone and play games. Yeah. Because all the malls where theaters are have gaming zones also. So I would be with these kind of options. Before you didn't have these options, you had only option that you go to a theater, then maybe you will have dinner with your family, and then you'll come back. That was a constant yeah. thing. And die-hard movie buffs will go for the morning show, evening show, anytime. Uh, but uh, if you're talking about a larger audience who are, um, if they're spending that 1,500, 2,000 rupees, they better spend it well. And for 2,000 rupees and 2,500 along with the popcorn and everything, they can go to an arcade also and play games. So you better give them their money. You better spend. give them... Uh, in some form, because movies are a source of entertainment. Yeah. We entertain them, and curiosity. So m maybe the reason why Kantara has really worked is purely is because, one, curiosity. Two, I want to know what more is happening there. And I'm just going and seeing a good story. And at the same time, it is entertaining. Yeah. And a director, a storyteller who has told the story from a lot of, with a lot of heart. Yeah. I think that is the most important thing. I don't think so. He must have ever thought, okay, what is going to be the box office of this? Yeah. He just went and made a great film. Yeah. And I think that is what is more important. That's right. Wonderful. Yes, just a quick question, please. And then we'll have to call it a day. We've had a fairly long day so far, so yes. Quick question. Good evening. Ashwini, uh, thank you first uh, for wearing Odisha handloom. We feel really uh, you know, proud that uh, you're also wearing our handloom. Uh, two things I just wanted to ask. One was uh, the when you're talking about you know how we used to think used to think during the 20s and how the children now think during the 20s. So my daughter like is into reels and uh, would be into virtual reality or mixed reality. So how do you cater to this particular segment of audience, which is the future audience? I mean, wh what is your strategy? Yeah, so I have kids who are 13 right now, uh, twin kids, a girl and a boy, and both of them think very differently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but both of them Focus think very differently. Uh, yeah, they think very differently. Uh, and these are the kids who are watching shows, who are watching stories which we would have not even imagined. And the kind of shows they're watching is uh, there's a show called the uh, the f the fam the family reunion or something in Netflix, and it talks about you know uh, U.S. and the and uh, the uh, the generation gap and between the youngsters and the parents and the grandparents. They watch that because they understand that uh, we have to live with the changing times and. Uh, uh, so my, uh, my, actually my uh, focus group are them is because we kind of check what, are, what kind of music are you listening. <laughs> I didn't know that there were certain kind of musicians who are even existed. Like? Um, <laughs> what is that guy? Who's that guy? <laughs> I don't know. I'm uh, obviously... <laughs> uh, uh, what is that guy? Uh, Sanjay Dutt. Sanjay Dutt. Yeah, he's very famous and okay. all, these, all these kids hear okay. him. Okay. So uh, these, are the, these are the kids who are watching this. They know when is the new Apple launch. Right. Like my son was awake the night, the day the Apple launch happened is because he and then came and told me that, you know, this is the new features of the new phone and this is how it's going to be. And I, <laughs> I was like, okay, got it. You're still struggling with your Android or you have, no, no, I have an Apple okay, phone. Chalo. So, so I, I think it's being about, and we, 
I have thought about this a lot, that how much do you step back and how much do you like, you know, avoid. My thing is that if you stop them from, from watching things or not being open to them about these things, uh, it is going to be uh, very badly reciprocated from our end is because they, they take it as a grudge. Yeah. So in my house it's reverse is that my son uh, that day was like banging his head on the bed and saying that, oh, this is a feminist house. <laughs> Hail feminism, hail feminism. <laughs> Good. So, you know, so... Uh, you can they, cast they are, in your next movie. Because you're seeing that. They, yeah. they are aware of these things. They talk about things. And uh, I don't think so. We should be stopping them from communicating what they feel from within. But it's very important to tell them that this is right and this is wrong. There can never be anything wrong, but maybe this should not be said in a certain way. <laughs> so... Yeah, that's the Gen Z. That's the Gen Z. Uh, there's a Gen Z and then there is an other one below that also. I got to know that because we are producing a film called Baskaro Anti with right. uh, Sid Roy Kapoor and Ronnie Struvala. And, that, and that's, that's where, and we've got a director who's like really young. And the kind, and what he has done, I don't think so I could have done that. Okay. And I asked him, so Abhishek, tell me, what is this generation? And he said, no, no, this is not the Gen Z. Below that, there's another generation. So which is the 13 what? and 12 year olds are called something which I don't I don't remember if someone knows. Uh, but Gen Z is about 13. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to this new world. Uh, quickly, last. Otherwise, I'll be thrown uh, thrown off the stage. Okay, okay. quickly. Hello, ma'am. Uh, okay, whoever, but the last Hello. one. Hello, ma'am. I'm a huge fan. So, uh, ma'am, right from Bareilly ki Barfi to Panga, you've written a range of masterpieces. So it is said that when you write a film, you try to live the ca character of the person in the film. And uh, you draw inspiration from reality. So has it ever happened with you that the character has seeped into your life so much? I think it will be a disaster if the character seeps into my life. <laughs> I can't do that. So basically, if you see my next web series, Fadu, then you'll say, no, no, you cannot get into this character. No. Uh, I think as storytellers, it is very important to understand insights and understand characters. So yes, most of our characters are from people who we have seen in real life. And if you have not seen them because um, uh, stories which are uh, sci-fi or stories which are fantasy still come from a very derived emotion. But it somewhere, you know, something, if you're telling real stories or slice of life stories, that's the key word right now, slice of life stories, mm -hmm. then you are looking at something, you're tell, writing a story, you are telling a story, you're directing a story by imbibing some of the qualities of, of that person you must have seen. So in Bareilly Ki Barfi, I roamed around Lucknow and Bareilly. I went to the market. I saw what are the kind of clothes boys of this generation wear. What, is, what does fashion mean to them? What does fashion mean to Kriti Sanan in as Bitti? So for her it was kurta jeans because 2015-16 everyone was wearing kurta jeans. But then they don't go to a mall because there was no mall. There was only one mall in Lucknow. But they will go to a tailor and the, the friend is a boutique designer. Like when she says your dress shop, she says no. Tailoring shop, she says, she says no, boutique. So those are the kind of things you take and then you move on. Uh, so she stitches her own clothes. She doesn't go, she doesn't go and buy. Uh, also Rajkumar's uh, character or Aishman Kurana's character about his hair. Hair, I literally took two photographs of these boys who were talking on the street. And I was, I kept searching, searching, searching and I saw and I saw these are the two guys and I went and told them, bhaiya, meko photograph lena, aapka picture lena. They stood in full swag and I took the picture. I think you just have to be slightly fearless when you're a maker and you don't, you can't think twice, oh, should I go and speak to them, should I can. I love uh, traveling by taxis and rickshaws is because you get so many stories. And sometimes those stories become your next inspiration, you know, like I was in, I was in a taxi and uh, I stay in Mumbai and we were, had to cross IIT Mumbai uh, and which comes in Kanjurmark in um, uh, uh, middle of uh, Bombay and uh, Mumbai sorry and um, so the guy the taxi driver told me that uh, he wants to stop for a minute right outside the gate 
So I thought maybe, you know, a shift change or something has happened, so he wants to go or talk to someone or give something or whatever. Because he said, I'll just come back, uh, Didi, just wait here for some time. I said, okay. He came back and I asked him, who did you meet? Curiosity, you know, we are curious people. Who did you meet? He said, no, I met my son. He's studying here. And from there, the story began, yeah. that how did he manage to get him into IIT, and what did he do, and what is his past, and you know, uh, he, he's also an AC contractor, but at the same time, he, he also drives a taxi, yeah. so that he can earn more money. Um, but in my wildest dream, I didn't think of that, right? And it was important for me to think of that, and it, it just made me more, uh, uh, I just felt more gratitude and more rooted and that's where it comes from. I think the stories which are really working right now is the more rooted you are, the more rooted to your culture, yeah. the more rooted you are to the human space, to the cultural space, to the anthropo anthropological space of society, of where we live, what we do, what are our stories, I think is what um, the younger audience wants to watch. Yeah. Because they are very dissected from their uh, roots. Yeah, so they want to reclaim. Yeah, because we also need our... Uh, are, are superheroes. Yeah. Okay, there was one lady, otherwise she'd get very upset. Hi, Ashwini. Wonderful, lovely listening to you. So I've got two questions, but you can answer any one or, or both. One of them is about the 13-year-olds. My son is 11, and, he, and his biggest complaint is there's nothing that he can watch on Indian television. Um, or a film which is very far and few, which he can really watch. So what are you doing about the 13-year-olds? Uh, are you creating anything for them? And the second one is, I'm a storyteller, so when I help other people tell stories. Uh, last summer, I got a call from this guy who's a writer. He's left his full-time job to become a writer, and he's writing his first web series. He's made his, uh, told his stories to directors and producers, and he, everybody said, thoda sa telling pe kaam karo. So while he's worked on the story, he's mostly concerned, like the writers you talked about, who write great work, but they're unable to tell their story to the producer, to a director like you. What is your tip to people like them who've got great stories in their mind, maybe on paper as well? What do they need to do to be able to tell their story orally to when they're making a pitch? Yeah, so this is something which we have faced. That's what I was telling Kaveri ma'am, that you know we empower them because not every writer um, you know, they're not confident yeah. or they're not, um, uh, you have a social anxiety. You can't like just keep going and telling stories to people. <coughs> uh, so answering your first question, because I want to answer both the questions. I think I've become a parental <laughs> guidance right now. <laughs> Second filmmaker. But yes, I will answer your question is because we're facing the same issue. I don't think so it's an issue. Uh, I don't see it as an issue. I do feel that it's very, the 13 year olds now are 15, 16 year olds. I mean, we should just get that in our heads that they are not 13 year old, they are 15, 16 year old. So you treat them as friends. So I keep telling my daughter and my son, oh, who's your best friend? If they don't tell my name, I get very upset. So, you know, because when you're your best friend, which means that you can tell me anything and I can speak to you about anything. So, uh, so, uh, so if they want to watch something, because again, there's a lot of peer pressure. Uh, in the sense that, you know, they discuss it in school, someone must be watching something. Like uh, uh, my colleague here told me that my daughter wants to watch Netflix, ma'am, what do I do? And she's just in class one. And I said, put parental control. And you have the op option right now to put parental control so that you know, you don't deny that you cannot watch Netflix, but you can at least put a parental control and put a password and say, this is what you can watch. So I like the way YouTube kids have come in, or Google has put this new parental control thing right now. So which is great. Uh, you cannot deny them, but you can only tell them that th there's no access to a lot of other things, but you cannot deny that. Yes, we are making content for young adults, it's because it's very important. Uh, right now they are watching a whole lot of content which comes uh, from outside the country. Uh, and it is very important that we, we make that content. Uh, but uh, no, the, the, the difference is that when we say we want to make uh, stories for children or young adults, we make it very, um, very childish. Uh, but the truth is that you need to treat them like young adults and make stories which are for them and not feel shy about it. Yeah. Answering your second question, 
so this is something which we have done. Either if, if there is anyone who is a good orator, goes along with that person and orates the screen, uh, screenplay to the, uh, to the producers. Uh, because the producers usually don't judge you because you cannot orate well. The producers only judge you with your story. And if a person cannot tell the story, is, feels very um, jittery in front of people to tell the story, then you have to have someone who can tell the story on behalf of them. And that's completely fine. The second option, which I have kind of told many of my writers, is that practice telling. It, it's like theater. Practice telling in front of the mirror. Narrate your script in front of the mirror. See how it goes. Imagine. Uh, the third thing is that uh, sometimes we just record the whole screenplay. We record the whole screenplay and we send it. Because uh, that also is a good method, is because you don't want to say, uh, or in, when you're alone, you can be more confident. So then you record the whole screenplay and you send it across. So the person who needs to hear will hear it in his or own time. And the fourth most important thing is to keep trying, is because you, how, how many more days will you be, uh, you will be under confident to not present your idea? Lots of tips. I hope you were taking notes. I was mentally. Thank you very much, Ashwini. It's been a delight. And thank you very much for being a lovely audience. I'm so sorry, but uh, you know, uh, uh, you can maybe ask her. I, I think we're just absolutely yeah. out of time. We're, yeah. We are out of time.